I am Dominique, and I will be your destination lecturer for the rest of the cruise. That means I, I describe the port that you will be going to, and um, I just mentioned ahead of time. So today we're in Sitka, but I have the talk on Hayes and Skagway for tomorrow. You heard or you know about the ton of goods. Every prospector that was coming there knew that they had to go over to the Yukon. Most of them did not know the Chilka Trail is only 33 miles. But Yukon is 600 miles away, Dawson City. So they said, well, it's like 33 miles, that's no problem. The other 600 miles downriver, that's no problem. Hello, look at the elevation. Only 33 miles, but Chicklet Pass, where they have to go, is 3,525 feet high. They have to climb that. That's okay. I climbed with my husband yesterday, about, what, 300 feet on rocks? That's okay, I had a backpack, that's okay. But a one ton to bring. So what they have to do is either, they have two choices, either walk more times and carry less on their back, or carry more and walk less, but they still had to carry it. And did you see the, they we're talking uh, August, November, by the time they go? <laughs> Snow. So they had to go, walk, bring some goods, put them in a cache, go back, bring more in a cache, go back, bring more. You see the feeling? They have different camps along the way. If you did not have money, like a lot of them arrived with no money because they bought everything they could and they thought they were going to get rich fast, then you have people that want to sell you horses because horses could be good for you to pack then you probably would have to hire native packers that will know the route and help you bring that. Then you can, uh, some people brought, uh, when I say bring, that means the horses were not growing on trees, right? So they had to bring, import the horses. Some came with dogs and goats and oxen to help them pack. And that's what it looks like, the scales, the golden stairs. This is probably the most iconic picture that you have seen if you've seen any of them of the gold rush. It's one person line, they had to go up there, and after that, then you had the customs, where you had to have all your goods so that it would be inspected, and then you could then go down the river. Now, you always have some businessmen, of course, that say, I can help you, I will build a tram for you, and I can transport some goods for you. Good. Between uh, two years, and we're talking 1897 to 1899, they would charge from one cent to five cents per pound to carry some of the way on the trams. But apparently some of the trams were so low that some of the prospectors could grab some of the goods as they were being dragged down and steal some things. So that's why they needed the police. Now, you're 3,000 feet up, 15 miles from the ocean, and you see that, which is still there. So if you want to go on a hiking trip on the Chilco Trail, you will see that along the way. Do you have any idea what they are? All right. The boats. You need boats to go down the river, right? Where do you think you're going to get the boats? You're going to carry the boats with you? Uh-uh. We have two choices. You can either build them on Lake Linneman or Bennett, and then you have to pay for them, of course. You have to cut the lumber and saw them and build a boat to carry your goods down the rivers. Or you can buy a canvas boat. They, <clears throat> apparently they had about 232 canvas boats, and some of those that we saw in the picture are leftovers from them. They probably had a large snowfall and just left them there. So you would assemble your boats. Hopefully it floated. You would assemble your boats, as you see here, in three sections. The other pass, you say, well, I'll give you a choice. You either go up to Chilkut and break your back, and you go way high, or you can get on the White Pass. The White Pass was about 10 miles longer, but it was less elevation. Hello, it's a no-brainer, I'm going to go there. Well, when you have a couple of people, like uh, hikers, that go there, that's fine. When you have thousands of people that go there in the fall to go there as fast as possible, then it's clogged with mud, mud, mud. 
you have to cross some of those streams 67 times. Some of those did not take a horse. Some of them did not take sleighs. They had to unpack the sleigh, cross the bridge, repack. So there was congestion on that trail. It was not a good trail. And that, and of course, have businessmen that say, trail, yes, money, uh, toll gate, hello, you can come on the trail, but you need to pay a toll on the trail. So they have to pay for that too. They could pack oxen, they could uh, hire some packers. But of course, when you're in a rush and you don't think of that, you have to buy the horse. And the horse, as I said, were imported. So when you buy the horse, and uh, then you're not sure what you're buying. The horses were not all in great condition to start with. First of all, you didn't think that you had to feed the horse and cover the horse in the winter time. So on that trail in the winter of 80, 98, 99, 3,000 horses died in the worst conditions. So the cemetery has about 143 um, internments there. Uh, some famous ones, some ones that you would not know. It's always, I always love cemeteries to look at the names, and most of them are, again, 1899, 1898, some young children, some 20 years old. Probably the most famous one is the one for Jefferson Randolph Soapy Smith. Okay, he was a con man, he was a scam man, he was everything, like Miss Clark said yesterday, a bad guy. The reason why he's called Soapy is that he has his gang with him and he wanted to make money. Everybody needs to make money. So the way he made money, one of the ways anyway, is that he would wrap bills, dollar bills around soap, wrapped in paper, and then say, if you buy my soap, then you have a chance to win big. Of course, his fellow people were in the crowd. They were buying a soap, switching it with a false soap that had money. They would unwrap it. I got money! I got money! Also, oh, everybody wanted to buy soap, but only the ones that were in his gang had the money bills around it. That was one. So that's why it's called Soapy Smith. The other one is really, I like. He started a telegraph system. Nice. You could send, pay money, send news to your loved ones at home that were waiting for you. Good idea, right? was going nowhere. Can you imagine that? How bad can you be? You're charging people for a telegraph company and it's not going anywhere. Well, that was Sophie Smith. So somebody said, okay, that's enough. And the person that said that is Frank Reed. So they had a shootout and they both got shot. Sophie Smith died, Reed died 12 days later. They both in the cemetery. Also in the cemetery, Martin Itchen was a tourism promoter because he had tourism in Skagway in the 20s and 30s, the first wave of tourism. And Mr. Itchen was a very uh, creative one. So he went down to Hollywood, he had a streetcar. If you do the uh, tour with the streetcar, it's modeled after his streetcar originally. He went down to Hollywood and you know who he saw? Mae West. And you know what he told her? He can come up and see me sometime <laughs> in Skagway. Again, the Trail Pack Saloon, this is the front building. So again, because you're business and you want to sell something, the business needs to look good. If you go in the back of the train saloon, you'll see the back is not as pretty as the front. And that's why you have those. And you'll see a lot of those in the area that's called false fronts. You see the business looks wide, but look at the building. It's the side building because it would cost a lot of money to have a larger front. So they used fault fronts, but all kinds of architecture details on that because they needed to sell some. So it's a beautiful town. Still, you have some wooden boardwalk on the town. They're all on the same level. And so it's a nice town to go to. And look at the signs there, really all painted. And that's the way it was back in the days. So do enjoy both towns, very different. Uh, and make sure that you use as many minutes as you can to enjoy those ports. Thank you very much. You. I will be in the back. Thank you. I will be in the back if you have any questions. So I, I just need to go because something else, as you know, is coming in uh, rehearsal.